Christ our Sugar and spice and everything nice. Lips and snails and puppy dog tails. That's what families are made of. Sticks and nails and plastic and bales. That's what dummies are made of. A dummy, according to the dictionaries, is an imitation or copy used as a substitute for something more valuable. An anthropometric dummy is a partial copy of a human being. Its measurements and weight are the same. It bends in some of the same places that people bend. It can be damaged by the same forces and impacts that injure people. Did you ever stop to think how many different kinds of dummies there are in this world? Show window dummies, dressmaker dummies, football dummies, ventriloquist dummies, and just plain dummies. Now take me, for instance. I am a test dummy, and my job is to do things that regular people can't do and live to tell about it. One thing for sure, we professional dummies never lack for excitement. For example, I'm getting ready for a test that... Oh, pardon me for a moment. As I was about to say before I was so rudely interrupted, I am about to drive this vehicle into a concrete wall. Hitting a solid barrier at 30 miles per hour is about the same as hitting a stopped car at 60 miles per hour. Here I go. <laughs> as a bird. A nice flight, wasn't it? About what you might expect with nothing to hold you back. While I'm getting a replacement head, would you like to see that ride again in slow motion? This is why I sometimes call myself a UFO, an unrestrained flying object. In fact, my whole family makes a living, I guess you could call it that by getting busted into pieces and then being put back together again. Even our small fry break them in while they're young, I always say. That's why I don't object when they kneel or stand up on the rear seat. A sure way to become a UFO in an accident. <laughs> in slow motion, you can see that we are a real example of family togetherness as we hurtle into each other. After all, we dummies can be made as good as new again with some plastic and wire and perhaps a few spare parts. Regular people can't. Sugar and spice and everything nice that's what people are made of. Not long ago, my family and I were lucky to be chosen for some test work on a machine the safety engineers call the impact sled. It's just as exciting as a real crash. But the results can be scientifically controlled and measured. The impact sled uses compressed air to cause a violent jarring start in a rearward direction. In slow motion, you can see that this creates exactly the same damaging effects as a violent jarring stop in a forward direction. Take my word for it as an experienced crash victim. What happened to us could happen to real people in a real car. You might call this a close family circle. Sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what people are made of.
After we had been put back together again, with new heads and a few spare parts all around, we were ready to see how much damage could be prevented by passenger car restraint systems. With our lap belts snug, as they ought to be, we stand a far better chance of staying out of the repair shop. This picture shows why the family that stays in place is more likely to stay together. We dummies have proved that the same safety belts that keep us from being scattered all over the landscape in bits and pieces of plastic and wire will help save lives and reduce injuries for regular people. And the same thing goes for the new energy absorbing steering column. In an accident, it helps reduce injury potential. What I can't figure out is why some people would rather sit on their belts than use them. Sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what people are made of. For us anthropometric dummies, the next test with both lap and shoulder restraints was a cinch. And that's an intentional pun. Lap belts should be cinched up, comfortably snug, and worn low over the hip bones. When you wear a shoulder belt, leave just enough slack for a hand's width of clearance between the shoulder belt and the chest. This slow motion shows how properly worn lap and shoulder belts reduce damage to dummies. So they ought to be even more important for people who are not dummies. Sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what people are made of. Of course, like almost everything else in this world, there's always a right way and a wrong way to use them. For example, one wrong way is to ignore them entirely or wear the lap belt loose, either with or without a shoulder belt. If the safety restraint systems aren't used properly, this is the kind of thing that could happen. Let's run that picture backwards and stop it in the middle. There I go with no belts at all, sailing like a big bird into the windshield. Meanwhile, Mrs. Dummy's loose lap belt slides up into the soft, unprotected area between the hip bones and the ribs. Another wrong way combination is a loose lap belt with a tight shoulder belt. This is rough, even on dummies. Watch us slide through the loose lap belts until the shoulder belts snag us. When you're wearing safety belts, it pays to wear them right. Here's the way to wear them right. Lap belts low and snug. Shoulder belts with the correct amount of slack. For the small one, a child safety seat. One like this. It's easier to keep her happy up front with us. There's a cushion under Junior so he can see out the window. Wearing them right means wearing them every time you drive. Safety belts are just as important for short trips as they are for cross-country travel. Engineers say that they can build into an automobile every safety factor except two, the road and the driver. Perhaps they ought to add passengers to that list. Sugar and spice and snips and spills, rubber and wires and plastic and bales, to see us all okay? Crashing into that heavy truck could be about as damaging as hitting a parked passenger car at 50 miles per hour. A real test of safety belts, just like the hundreds that safety engineers stage every year to test all the safety factors that have been built into today's automobiles. Here's the start of the test you just saw. Test engineer ready, test crew ready, camera ready, plant protection ready. And here we are, all belted up and ready to go. Of course, I wasn't really driving. The car was on a guide rail. <laughs> Safety authorities estimate that if every driver and his passengers used their lap belts properly, eight to 10,000 lives would be saved each year. In slow motion, you can see why. And 
They say shoulder belts would save additional lives. Here are some scenes from another test my family thought was very exciting. A rollover with all of us belted in. Send a child safety seat too. Plenty rough, but we all stayed in our seats. This special camera gives an idea of what it's like inside the car. Then we did the job again, using a different car, of course, this time for comparison. And since we dummies are expendable, even if people aren't, we left our safety belts unused. It certainly put the point across. Inside the car without belts, we all tumbled about like popcorn. See what can happen without safety belts? What a mix-up. And as you can see, we got a real bang out of it. This is the kind of experience that even a dummy can learn from. Even a dumb dummy can see that safety belts all around are the safest way to drive and enjoy your driving. Sticks and nails and plastic and bells, that's what dummies are made of. Snips and snails and puppy dog tails, sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what people are made of. Remember, the same safety belts that keep dummies out of the repair shop can help save lives and reduce injuries for you or your family. Be sure your lap belt is low and snug. And if you wear a shoulder belt, leave just enough slack for a hand's width of clearance between the shoulder belt and the chest. A safety seat gives more protection for the little ones. Don't be a UFO an unrestrained flying object. After all, let us be the dummies, not you. Oh.